There are two strategies for doing a big year. Option one, watch for rare bird reports and then rush by plane, train, or automobile to find the rare bird. The more common birds will take care of themselves. Option two, schedule trips around the country to see all of the common birds and hope you are lucky enough to find a few rarities along the way. Ethan refers to option two as the win the lottery method. Welcome to the week 41 update of Ingrid and Ethan's 2024 big year. Having just completed an eight day trip to Colorado, Wyoming, and Arizona, our hope we get lucky approach continues to pay off. On Sunday, October 13th, we left home before 3 a.m. as we had an early flight from Boston to Denver. Upon landing in Colorado, we made a diversion to Laramie, Wyoming, and a shallow lake where a yellow-billed loon had been reported. Wyoming is the 37th state we have visited this year, and we enjoyed seeing the many ranches with cattle, horses, and pronghorn on our race to the loon. Normally found nesting in the high Arctic and wintering in southern Alaska, this was a bird we never expected to get on a lower 48 big year. Our get lucky strategy was working perfectly. When we arrived, the yellow-billed loon was on the distant corner of the lake, but visible in our spotting scope. We took a few documentary photos and headed back to Denver. The next morning, Ryan Dabala, an experienced birding guide, picked us up in his Jeep to help us find the handful of Colorado birds we missed when we were here in April. Our first stop was at Loveland Pass on the Continental Divide and a search for the white-tailed ptarmigan. This ptarmigan lives its entire life above the tree line, turning all white in the winter and partly brown during the summer, camouflage from predators on this barren landscape. Ethan and I live literally at sea level along the main coast. When we suddenly thrust ourselves onto a mountain at 12,000 feet, our breathing became difficult and walking up a simple incline made our hearts beat out of our chests. Ryan led us for several miles across the boulder-strewn moonscape looking for the little critters, but we had no luck. We did enjoy the comical mountain pikas, a rabbit-like rodent that can be seen scurrying about the rocks, all while emitting a panicky squeak. We were also amazed by Ryan's billy goat-like stamina. As we stood panting in a gully, he would race up and over a nearby peak looking for the ptarmigans. Finally, though, with tears in our eyes, we headed west toward Grand Junction, a town we had stayed in last spring. The following morning, we were chasing chuckers. The chucker is not native to the United States. It is a Eurasian game bird introduced to North America by sportsmen who use them to train hunting dogs. Today's fun fact, the chuckar is the national bird of Pakistan. Thank you, Ethan. Enlightening as always. Some of these imported chuckars escaped, established breeding populations in parts of the U.S. and are now countable during a big year. But not everywhere. Ethan and I often see chuckars near our home in Maine, but the population in Maine is virtually all escaped birds. So the chucker walking down the road in front of our house isn't countable. But the one we heard singing in Coal Canyon was... That evening, Ryan took us owling. When our trip began, we had seen 10 of the 14 species of owls regularly observed in the continental U.S. The tiny and elusive boreal owl was tonight's target. On our fourth stop, we heard one and then a second. Following morning, we were in Rocky Mountain National Park at Medicine Bow Curve, on a mountain that normally would have been covered with snow by now and inaccessible. Luck smiled on us once again and allowed us a second shot at the elusive white-tailed ptarmigan. Well above the tree line, the views were spectacular as Ethan, Ryan, and I split up the search. After 90 minutes, Ethan and I were exhausted, the altitude was brutal, and we waved Ryan over. We were ready to give up. While waiting for Ryan, we both suddenly heard a ptarmigan call. A few minutes later, Ethan, out of the corner of his eye, saw a bird fly behind a distant boulder. By now, Ryan had arrived, and he pointed about 50 yards down the mountain. Eight beautiful white-tailed ptarmigans were walking toward 
a recently melted stream. High fives and hugs all around. A beautiful, unique bird, and we had really worked for it. 24 hours later, Ethan and I arrived in Phoenix, jumped in our rental car at the airport, and raced east toward the Boyce Thompson Arboretum, an hour away. Why the hurry, you ask? A yellow grosbeak had journeyed up from Mexico and was feeding in a pistache tree. How lucky is that? Upon arriving, a birder was pointing up into the tree, and there was the grosbeak, yellow with a huge beak, our 12th code 4 bird of the year. About 15 minutes later, a code 3 rufus back robin flew in to join the yellow grosbeak a code three and a code four in the same tree. When we planned this trip a month ago, we never predicted that. After staying in four different hotels over four nights in Colorado, we checked into this lovely Tucson ranch house for three nights, a nice change from packing and unpacking. We were charmed by the Western screech owl that slept above the front door. At night, he would sing from the backyard. While on the subject of owls, we have been looking for a spotted owl all year, striking out on earlier trips to Arizona, California, and Washington State. Friends had raved about birding guide Caden Hatfield's ability to find these secretive birds, and we contracted with him to take us up nearby Mount Lemmon on Friday night. After a 25-mile drive up the mountain's twisting cutback roads, we reached a small turnoff. Together we stood on a cold, windy, remote, and dark point on the mountain and began to wait and listen. After about five minutes, Ethan heard the first hoot. Then Caden and I heard it. Ten minutes later, the bird was sitting in front of us, hooting away, posing for photos. Simply incredible. On the drive down the mountain, Caden told us how to find a Baird's Sparrow on Saturday. It was an adventuresome hike across the grassland, but directions were spot on and we got the bird. The Baird Sparrow was our sixth life bird in Arizona as we picked up a ruddy ground dove on Friday morning and another bird that we've agreed not to disclose for a week due to the property owner's privacy concerns. Check back in to, for next week's recap for more information on this incredible bird. Coupled with the four lifers in Colorado and Wyoming, our year total is now at 698. Special thanks to Ryan Dabala and Caden Hatfield for all of their help and good company.